everybody, this is Carla with Cobweb Corner, and this is Floss Tube number 82, and it is April 26, 2023. Welcome to my channel. This is a channel about cross stitch and my online cross stitch shop, cobwebcorner.com. Um, and I am happy you're here and spending some time with me. I know how valuable time is, and we have a ton of new subscribers, so thank you to everybody, and thank you to my returning subscribers. And if you're new, I hope you enjoy the video and think about subscribing if you like it. So all of that out of the way, I have a ton to share today. Um, and I'm gonna read page two of the travel journal that I introduced last week. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I actually was super crafty. Um, and it's only been um, like just over two weeks since my last video. So if you've been watching for a while, that's like major. Um, so what's going on? So one of the reasons I'm a little excited today is today my husband completed 35 of 35 radiation treatments and he got to ring the bell and I will probably have put that in the intro or somewhere in the video. So he is done with radiation and um, uh, we are really excited. He handled it so well and did just really, really did a good job uh, as far as um, no symptoms or side effects and stuff like that other than some fatigue. And we are so glad that that part of the journey is over. And it'll be many months before we know uh, how successful the radiation treatment is. And there's a number of reasons why it will take so long, but I'm not gonna go into that. But thank you to everyone who has sent uh, uh, good thoughts and prayers about his treatment and his uh, hopeful recovery and cure. And I will keep you updated when we learn more. Um, so that is just awesome news. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm looking at my notes and they're over here. They should be here. Um, one of the things that is coming up is, uh, for those of you who have watched me for a while, uh, it is farming season. And we go up north to southern Minnesota where we help our friends who have about a 4,000 acre farm. And we only go up during planting and harvest season. And planting season is imminent. So they still have, it's still cold up there. And my husband was explaining that the six inch, top six inches of the soil has to reach a cer certain temperature before they can plant. So it isn't quite there yet, but as soon as the um, soil temperature gets warm enough and the fields get dry enough, then they will start planting. And we are planning on going up and helping them. So. Uh, I can't give an exact date, but I will be closing the shop while I'm gone for at least five to seven days. So if there's something you want um, to order, get those orders in um, within the next week. I can't imagine that we would leave before then. And otherwise, you'll see a notice on my shop that we're closed. And what will happen when I'm actually closed is... Um, you'll be able to browse you'll be able to check your order history and all of that but you won't be able to check out you'll be able to add things to your cart but you won't be able to check out and there'll be a link that explains where we are and and uh, stuff like that so um just give you a heads up that that is coming up um so let's see what else is happening not much um my mom who broke her shoulder went back to the doctor, had x-rays, she's healing well, no longer has to wear a brace, and is starting physical therapy soon. So overall, really good news. Um, last video, I introduced my great aunt's travel journal that she took a five week trip and I read the first page and I said, I'm not sure if you guys will be interested in this. I'll put it at the end of every video. And that way, if you don't want to listen to it, you can skip it. You can still skip it, but the response was overwhelming um, in favor of keep reading the journal. I got a lot, a lot of comments um, that people enjoyed it. So I decided I'm not, even though I said I was going to do it at the end of the video, I'm going to do it at the beginning of the video. Um, so I'm going to read day two. So this is a journal that uh, my, my aunt, her husband and her mother took a five week vacation in 1939. And I only read the first page, I'll read one page at a time. And the first page they had just driven from Chicago to Anamosa to pack the car and pick up her mother, which would have been my great grandmother. And um, they were had spent the night there. So now they were getting ready to leave. So this is dated August 26th, 
1939, a Saturday. It says, we are happy to see such a beautiful morning, just the right temperature and so fresh. Johnny and Wes took four pictures before we took leave. I think the one of Wes in the car and mother and dad looking on is particularly interesting. Mother and dad are questioning the room in the back seat and Wes is in the car adjusting things so that there will be room for mother. A quarter to eight, we were in the car and driving away. Dad and Johnny stood watching and waving to us until we were out of sight. A kind of lonesome feeling crept over us and we hoped that they would be all right while we were gone. Our car registered 2,806 miles as we drove out of the folks' yard. We took Highway 64 to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where we got on Highway 11 that took us to Decorah via Kalmar. At Decorah, we took Highway 52 to Harmony and Rochester, Minnesota. <clears throat> While I was getting out of the car at Old Wine, Iowa, I knocked the quart thermos bottle out of the car and broke it. That was accident number one. I strained the coffee into an extra bottle that we had with us and all was well. It was just noon when we crossed the Iowa-Minnesota border or Minnesota line and entered Harmony, Minnesota. On the outskirts of that little town, we found a lovely picnic ground with shade, clean tables, and lots of nice green velvety grass. It was a perfect place to eat, so we did. We had homemade uh, whole wheat bread, sliced tomatoes, cheese, and coffee. It was indeed a nice welcome that marvelous Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, gave us. We realized that there were many hidden beauties and wonders in our in in and out Niagara Caves at Harmony, but we didn't stop to visit them. Mother and I had seen the caverns and Wes didn't care to take the time on this trip. He is out for bigger sights. From Harmony, we continued on 52 to Rochester and Minneapolis. It seemed that after we got into Minnesota that we were really traveling and we began to feel that we were a long way from home. I had given little thought to Minnesota and what it produces and was surprised to find it an agricultural state with such a diversification of crops. In the year of 1926, Minnesota was first in the production of barley and flax, second in oats and rye, and fifth in the production of corn. From the route that we took, we got the impression that Minnesota was rather a rather poor state. As we got further north and saw the mines, timber, etc., we could see sources of wealth and industry. It was only two hours drive to Rochester. We spent an hour or more walking and riding about the city. Wes and I cashed traveler checks. Mother and I visited the 10 cent store for cards, which means postcards, while Wes bought two rolls of films and a stamp. I was anxious to see the Mayo Clinic and was disappointed to find it such an ordinary building located right downtown. I had imagined that it would be a series of magnificent structures with beautiful landscaping in an outlying section of the city limits. We walked past the clinic, but did not go inside. We wondered if we should take time to go through the museum across the street from the clinic, but we didn't. The next day I was told by a young kid who was on his first trip out, in, out to see everything that we should have gone through it because it showed all the terrible diseases and the results. I knew then that I was glad we hadn't gone through the museum. The patients who go through the clinic and remain for treatment are taken to the St. Mary's Hospital, which is located in the northern part of the city. We then drove about the city and viewed Silver Lake, Mayo's Civic Auditoriums, which is new, modernistic in design, and seats 7,000 people. Rochester is an attractive little city with picturesque surroundings. Since it is located in the most prosperous agricultural sections, it has much commercial activity besides what the Mayo Clinic draws. The transient population is estimated at 300,000 annually. There are wholesale and commission houses, flour mill, mills, a camera, camera factory, and several other manufacturing industries. The first settler in Rochester built his log cabin there in 1854 and laid out the main street by dragging a log through the brush. He called it Rochester because the falls there reminded him of those near Rochester, New York. From Rochester, we continued north to Minneapolis. It was getting time to look for a cabin by that time. We didn't see any that particularly appealed to us, so we drove on through the city, uh, drove on through the city and took the cab, a cabin about seven miles north of the city limits on Highway 65. We are now in a cabin north of the city. The cabin isn't as nice as we hoped for, but we are comfortable and tired enough to sleep anywhere. Expenses for the day. Gas near Rochester, Minnesota, three gallons, 62 cents. Gas at Cannon Falls, 6.5 gallons, $1.39.
Bug screen at Cannon Falls, 75 cents. Cards, meaning postcards, 6 cents. Films, 64 cents. Stamps, 10 cents. Bread, 12 cents. And the cabin, $1.75 for the night. Car now registered 3,122 miles, drove 316 miles. Wes drove this forenoon and I drove the afternoon. So that took a little longer. Um, it was a two page instead of um, just one. And so uh, hopefully, you know, just skip by those if you don't enjoy those, but I think they're fascinating. Um, so I will read page three on the next one, or day three on the next video. So personal crafting, I didn't really get any stitchy mail this time, um, but I did do quite a bit of crafting. I'm gonna start out with a finish. I have been working on um, my machine embroidery, February table topper since before February, <laughs> and I finally finished it. So this is it. I think it's, I wanna say 27 by 27. I think that might be right. and. It is all done with machine embroidery and then a little bit of um, piecing, piecework. But I had finished all the individual pieces and I think last time I showed you, I just had this section pieced together. But um, it is done. It's got this little love bug. I can't see it because they're upside down, you know? I don't... Oh yeah, they're right, right to me. And got vinyl colored vinyl over the candy hearts and I'm really really happy with it um, I did mess up I'm having a problem learning how to finish my bindings and I've watched a number of videos and I understand how to do it but every time I'm trying to find out where I finished it at here every time I I piece my bindings together I end up with just a tiny bit of too much binding fabric and I end up with a um, uh, gather, what do you, whatever that's called, when I have too much fabric and there's a pucker, a pucker, that's what I'm thinking of. So, um, and then I don't hand stitch my bindings. It's just not anything I'm ever gonna do. So I would have, I used the, um, the uh, measurements they gave me in the pattern, but I would have made my binding smaller because it does have a little bit of overhang, but nobody's ever gonna see that anyway. So that is done. And I have the patterns for the first six months of the year. Um, and I'm gonna continue to work. I also have the kits, the fabric kits. So then also on quilting side of things, I actually need some placemats for our table. Um, we have, we got a new dining room table and we wanna keep the top of it as nice as we can for as long as we can. So I looked up some placemat patterns and I found this one and I need to buy some backing material yet but the first plate I have enough only have enough fabric of this color coordination to do two placemats and then I need a backing but um this is the what the placemat will look like and it has a little pocket to put your silverware in so isn't that gorgeous and uh, there was a video on how to make this and I will try to find the video and put the link down below. But I had this set of, actually came as a, a set of fat quarters and I can definitely get two placemats out of that. So all I need to do, I've got, it uses soft and stable for the um, batting instead of just a regular quilt batting and I have that already, and then I just need my backing material, and then they don't um, bind it. They just sew it right sides together and turn it inside out, so which is very easy. So hopefully I'll get both of those made soon, or at least go shopping for my backing material. Then, so that was it for machine stuff. Then I continued work on, where's my pattern? My Halloween cat pattern. And I think when I, my last video, I had just had most of the face done. And I finished the cat's body and just started on the moon. So I made quite a bit of progress on that. And then um, 
sorry, I'm trying to put everything away here. Um, but um, um, like I said before, if you guys could see the tables of floss tubers <laughs> when we're actually doing these videos, it was it's crazy. So then um, I decided to get Country Fair by Courtney Collection back out. I hadn't worked on this for a long time and I was right here at this. I just finished this line, this row right here and I got the entire next row done. So this is the sampler and I did the bottom row. And I still have just under half left, let's see. Yeah, I just started, so this is the first major row of the second half. Um, so I just love this, it's done in only two colors and I'm using the called for silks and I am stitching two over two so it's a thick coverage, which adds quite a bit to the expense of the, of the silks, but I like a thicker coverage. The only comment I would have is that the designer uses two brands of silk. Um, let's see, she uses Overa Soie is the, is the, in Noir is the black, and then Crescent Colors Belle Soie is the red, it's called Tulip. And they're a little bit different weights. So, um, two strands of the red is very thick and two strands of the black is just right. So um, had it been two, had it been the same weight as the red, which was the Belle Soie, I maybe could have got by with one strand. Although I always like a thicker coverage rather than um, less coverage. So I might've just gone with two, two over two anyway. So anyway, I'm really excited. I mean, look at that top. And the top is repeated upside down on the bottom. Otherwise, every band is different, which I think is neat because a lot of times if a designer made this, they would just repeat the, the bands in backwards order on the bottom. And this one, they're all different. So I'm really, and I'm stitching this on 32 count, um, I want to say lamb's wool. I can't remember. I had a yardage that I cut up. So that, so I actually did a lot of stitching. Um, let's see, where's my notes? Okay, my plans. So last time I talked to you, I'm gonna continue working on both of those that I just showed you. And then last time I talked to you about, should I do Dressmaker's Daughter? And a lot of people said, yes, do it. You know, I can always start it and not finish it. And, um, uh, I started looking, I did open it. So now I have to do it because, um, you know, because it's open. But I wanted to see like how hard the stitching was because a lot of Mirabilia, it looks really hard, but you do a lot of stitching in the same colors. So you can stitch like this, almost this entire backgrounds in one color and that goes pretty quick. Um, but there are, oh, 30, 35, or more colors used and then like 22 colors of beads which is just crazy um, but I've ordered the um, embellishment kit and we'll get that in a few weeks and then I'm trying to decide on what fabric to use it calls for it calls for um, let's see milk chocolate which is pretty dark but I actually kind of like this chestnut color so the chestnut colors kind of seems more like the photo, but I've got both and I think, I think an 18 by 27 will be big enough, but I got to verify that. I might need to buy a half yard or something. But anyway, I had asked about the words at the bottom and everybody, I don't think anybody said stitch the words. Everybody said, leave the words off. But here's the thing. If I leave the words off, then it's not even on the bottom. So you see where this dress, the word um, winter goes right over top of the dress. And then these all line up. Well, if I leave the words off, there's gonna be this empty space underneath um, spring and summer. And I think it's gonna look weird. So considering that, give me your opinion again on whether to do the words or not. I don't really like the words, 
but I'm afraid it will look weird to have the two short dresses and the one long dress. But I'm gonna start pulling floss and stuff for that and get going on that. Okay, um, winners from last week. So we had a number of giveaways. Um, the first thing that we gave away on the last video was this magnetic needle holder. And you had to use the word um, point. And there were 52 people interested in this. And the winner is Quiltma Dash Sue Gooden. Quiltma Dash Sue Gooden. Now, if you're a winner, my email address is down below. Um, email me and make sure you put floss tube winner in the subject line. Give me your mailing address and tell me what you won. Because if you don't tell me what you won, I might send you somebody else's thing. Sorry, I had to. I've been, I am talking fast and I know I am. I've got so much to go over. Um, so just bear with me, guys. Um, so the next thing was the fabric. So I gave away a piece of Jody's fabric and you had to use the word fabric. 72 people were interested in this and the winner is Lori Thornton. So Lori can contact me. And then the next one was my copy, so I'm done with it, of um, Tea Time Companion by Ingleside Imaginarium. And you had to use the word dragon. 23 people were interested in this. And the, uh, winter, the winner is Rose Castro. Um, the next one was the set of cards patterns by uh, It's So Emma. And you had to use the word cards, plural, and there were 44 people interested in this. And the winner is Lori Voltero. And then the next one was these miniature stork scissors. You had to use the word stork. There were 81 people interested in these. I had no idea so many people, <laughs> more people were interested in the scissors than the, than the fabric. And the winner is Jill Petit. And then last was this uh, My Guilty Pleasure chart. You had to use the word guilty. There were 34 people interested in it. And the winner is Goldie Fischels. Goldie Fischels. So that is those. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today, um, not really a business topic, but uh, interesting topic, is this chart by Mirabilia came out Oh, a few months ago, and it's been out of stock on my site for quite some time, and it's finally back in stock, and was really popular um, at first. And I went onto one site and was reading about it, and I, I'm like, oh, well, this must have to do with uh, Florence Nightingale. And I got to reading about it, and there is a thing called Florence uh, Nightingale's Rose. And these are, there's roses in her dress and then these kind of medallions on her dress in blue. So I started doing some research about that. And of course we all know Florence Nightingale um, was a nurse in um, uh, Britain, United Kingdom now. And um, she, she was known particularly for trying, working hard to improve sanitation in the hospitals and areas where patients were cared for and, and um, general hygiene. So washing of hands and sterilization and all that stuff. So that was a big, big thing for her. And when she was working in the war in Crimea, and I'm not sure, 1855 to 1856, somewhere in there, um, she designed a graph and they call it Nightingale's Rose. And the graph was used to show her, her, her idea behind it was to show how many of the deaths that were occurring actually were maybe preventable because of disease, contamination, and that type of thing. So um, I suggest to learn more, you can just go on Google Florence Nightingale or Florence Nightingale graph. But here's a picture of the graph she made. And then I'll 
read what it says here. So what she was trying to show was um, how many deaths do we have by month and how many of those possibly could have been pre preventable because there were diseases or um, she, was, she was getting towards sanitation, hygiene, that type of thing. So the blue wedges measured from the center of the circle represent an area for the deaths from preventable or mitigable zymolic diseases. The red wedges are the deaths from wounds from the war and the black um, wedges are the deaths from all other causes. So you can see that, and then she drew the graph. If you go on to Wikipedia or whatever, and, and or learn more about the graph, you'll see that she drew it to try to give more of a visual representation of the number of deaths. So the number, the blue, which actually starts from the center, represents the deaths that maybe possibly were preventable. And then that red was, the red portion was from wounds and the black was from all other causes. So she was trying to have proof that, you know, what hopefully would happen then is as the months kept going and she, if she was able to instigate any changes that you would see that blue wedge um, go down. But I thought that was really interesting to get a little bit more idea behind why Nora Corbett did the dress the way that she did it. And if you also learn about, um, if you read about Florence Nightingale, she had a lot of social causes that she was known for besides um, um, nursing and uh, trying to get uh a lot of community activities and things that she tried to get to help people in need. So very, very interesting lady. And I think this chart is a just amazing, amazing tribute to her. So anyway, I hope that you found that interesting. Um, new giveaways. So actually I am talking so fast. <laughs> I thought this video was going to take like an hour and I'm talking so fast that uh, I hope you guys can understand me. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so anyway, giveaways for this time. Got a few here. So the first thing is a gingham thread bling by Lori, uh, Lori Holt. It's brand new. And use the word bling, B-L-I-N-G. And to enter the giveaways, you have to be 18 or older, so I can legally ask for your address. Do not use the word giveaway. And you need to be a subscriber to the channel to... Um, be in the giveaways. So bling, B-L-I-N-G. The next one is by, also by Lori Holt, and it's called Chicken Club. Isn't that cute? And this is a brand new chart. Use the word chicken, C-H-I-C-K-E-N. The next one is a pre-owned chart in excellent condition. And this is called A Place We Call Home by um, Country Cottage Needle Works, and it says, with faith in our hearts and love all our own, together we've made a place we call home. And use the word home, H-O-M-E. Another one's a pre-owned chart, um, again, in excellent condition. This is called Sweet Spring Garden by Elizabeth's Designs. Elizabeth, Elizabeth's Designs. And let's just see if that's, it does use uh, about five specialty stitches. Use the word garden. And you can see there's a little bit of wear. It's not bad, actually not bad at all. So this is pre-owned. And then Good Night Sleep Tight by um, The Stitch Works. And this is from a, this is new old stock from a shop that went out of business a number of years ago. Look at that design, isn't that amazing? And then it shows how you could stitch just part of the design, the top part, top hill part. So um, use the word sleep, S-L-E-E-P. And I will draw the winners for those on the next video. Um, Okay, so I'm tempted, tempted to redo this video and talk slower. Um, new inventory. 
Uh, let's see. How do I want to do this? I have quite a bit, actually. Um, and also, I have had a ton of restock. So I have a special playlist. Um, if you go on my channel, there's a tab on the chan on everybody's channel that has playlists. And it's a way for FlossTube uh, presenters to organize their videos. So one of my playlists is restock videos. And on those, they're usually only 8 to 11 minutes. And I just very quickly go through inventory that I have gotten that was out of stock that's back in stock. Where on these floss tubes, I show inventory that's new to my um, shop. Um, it may not be new designs, but it's things I either haven't ever carried or haven't carried for many, many years. Um, but anyway, I've had at least two restock videos since the last video and I got a huge shipment from Wichelt. Wichelt um, is the only place I can get the Nora Corbett design so I can get Mirabilia on Hoffman but I can't get Nora Corbett who is the Mirabilia um, designer. She also releases charts that are usually a little bit easier. Um, I think I've got some in here to show you but she releases them under the name Nora Corbett and those are only available from Wichelt. Also, the embellishment packs that I get for all of the Nora Corbett and Mirabilia charts are only available from Wichelt, and they are weeks behind. So I put in an order, I think, March 3rd or 7th, and I just got it two days ago. So it's like a seven-week delay on getting orders, which is really frustrating, um, but that's the way it is. So... Sorry, I usually don't drink a lot while I'm on video, but I uh, have been having sinus issues, so I'm thirsty. Okay, let's go through this. So, um, a lot of you, a lot of people tell me they are not, um, didn't know that I sold fabric. I only sell pre-packaged fabric by Wichelt, and I don't sell it all, I don't sell all the counts, but I try to have a pretty good supply in. So this is a new color, this is Tropical Orange, and this particular one is 14 Count Ada. So that is new to the shop. And this is 28 Count Tropical Orange Linen. So if you go, actually let me bring it up because people don't understand, I think. I get a lot of questions on, whoops. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to get my website up here. Okay, so here's how my, when you're working on a phone, there we go. When you're working on a phone and you go to my site, it looks like this. And a lot of times people just use, just see the search bar. But if you click this little three lines here, then you get the menu. And the menu, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But the menu has all the different categories and all the other information that you might need. And one of the categories is fabric. And then all the fabrics down below, or you can go by count. And I know that I know that's really hard to see, I'm sorry uh, for the reflection and stuff. But the point of that was, is when you're on a mobile device in portrait mode, click the little three, three little lines and you'll get way more information about the website okay also new is the chestnut which i showed you earlier that i might end up using for although that's a yeah that's 32 count i want to do dressmaker's daughter on 32 count um new by uh tiny modernist is patriotic bicycles and you get both the u.s version and the canadian version and also by Tiny Modernist, Jolly Christmas Bell Pole. Isn't that cute? Santa's feet hanging down the chimney. Night Owl, Nighttime Owl, sorry, by Tiny Modernist. And some of these are duplicates. Mogi Banner by the Blue Flower. And this is her, her uh, sampler charts are so cool. It says, a quiet hour beneath the trees, a little, a little whispering lazy breeze, a perfect sky. Look at all the different animals in there. And then Tiny Modernist Tropical Christmas. 
new by uh, new to the shop by Mirabili is Lady of the Mist. Then I have multiples of the same thing here. So um, the Stitch Fairies was a series of kits put out by Nora Corbett. And I want to say like 2011 or something. I can't remember for sure. But most of the kits are sold out. And you can only buy chart only now. But this is still a full kit. And I bought three or four of them. I think I bought four and I've sold one. This is the Stitching Fairies series. And this is number two. And this is the Pin Cushion Fairy. Now, once these are gone, once, once Hoffman sells out of these, they're, they'll only sell the chart. So, um, and I think these are still priced at the original old pricing. Um, I'm not positive about that. But you get everything you need, fabric, beads, crinic, and uh, crescent. This, it must be, this is still crescent colors, hand dyed floss, instead of classic color works. So... Three of those are available right now. And then new by October House Fiber Arts intro into the garden softly. Look at that picket gate fence. It's so delicate. And Bloom and Grow by October House Fiber Arts. Tulip Cottage. Friendly Blooms. It says, for a friend. And then I got um, a Tisket, a Tasket, a Book of Stitched Baskets by Needlework Press. And it has a number of different designs in this little booklet. So I don't know if they have better. I don't know if I can show you any bigger pictures without showing a pattern. Yeah, this is pretty much the best. So I've got a couple of those. And then Live a Humble Life by October House Fiber Arts. And then by Bed Creek, we have Each Day Row. It's a newer design. Each day provides its own gifts. And also a newer design, Smiling at You, E-W-E, -E, by Bed Creek. Vintage Flowers number two by Jeanette Douglas Designs. I also have Vintage Flowers, uh, which is number one. It's just called Vintage Flowers. This is part of her Vintage series. There's also um, uh, Vintage Animals, Vintage Birds. Uh, I just got, I haven't put it on the website yet, but there's Vintage Acorns. Vintage Grapes was a new market release. So that's part, this is part of her uh, series. I think it's just beautiful. New by Blackbird Designs, Crowns and Shields. And it is all the designs in here, I believe, are based off of this original sampler. So here is a monotone version. And then what else does she have in here? She's got kindred spirits, but I think all the motifs and things are taken out of that. I'm looking at the sampler, I might be wrong. Yeah, I think, I think the motifs are taken out of the original sampler. So crowns and shields. And I've got the new number five in the Snowman Collector series, the Scarecrow. And last is Quaker Moon by Bent Creek, and it includes a button for embellishment. And then also by Blackbird Designs, I got in the booklet Feast of Friendship, which has been out of stock for months and months, and um, they did a reprint. So Feast of Friendship is also back in stock. All right, so I think that is it. Oh, and then I got, there's two new colors of um, General Arts Thread from the market. I got those in stock. They are Habanero and Ohio Sky. And these are 10 yard skeins. So I only sell 10 yard skeins and that is about a 25% savings over two five yard skeins. So two 
one 10 yards gain is $3.90 and two five yards gains is like five something. So I can't remember what the five yard retail price is. Um, I wanna say 260, but I think it might be higher than that. So it's at least $5. So you save a lot by buying 10 yards gains. And plus you don't have to worry about running out. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching everybody and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know um, what you thought. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you're uh, new to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe. I know I keep asking that, but it is appreciated. And I do appreciate you guys. So happy stitching and we'll see you in a couple weeks. And also I will um, probably be posting videos when I do go up to the farm. So I'll try to put those in a separate playlist. Um, they will be probably short uh, videos and you can keep up on the farming if you want to, if that's something that you find interesting. So talk to you later guys. Bye-bye.